Every journey through Namibia is an adventure, and this one is no different. Join us for an epic trek through exquisite landscapes. The journey started early in the morning in Wolfers Bay with everything needed for the trip packed the day before. Stopping for final checks just outside Wolfers Bay, we take in the scenery and some cool air. Close to the coast, it's overcast and foggy. This means the salt roads up to Vogel Vederberg are quite good because the occasional moisture in the air allows the salt in the roads to melt and heal the road. After Vogels, the road started to get its usual corrugation that is common throughout Namibia. Pretty soon the clouds started to clear and we came across our first signs of the recent rains. For those of you that don't know, Namibia is a pretty dry place. It has all of the Nama Desert and a good chunk of the Kalahari. On top of that, for roughly the last 10 years, most of the country has been experiencing drought conditions. When it rains in Namibia, it's news. Because of being locked down for most of 2020, the rains was a perfect excuse to get out for a bit and go see something that very few people see. We were lucky enough to see water in Sauce's Flay in 2012 and now we wanted to do it again. Most of Namibia's rivers only flow after rains in their catchment areas and normally have no surface water. This does not prevent them from carving gorgeous canyons through the landscape. The first canyon to cross is the Kisip River Canyon where Heno Martin and his buddy were AWOL from the Germans in the First World War for almost two years. He wrote The Sheltering Desert where you can read more about their adventure during this time. With the river in flood, we stopped a bit at the bridge to enjoy the water in the canyon. All too soon we had to hit the road again as we were not even halfway to our destination yet. At the top of the climb out of the Kisip Canyon, there is this little stretch of tarred road and an amazing view. The end of the tarred road and the border of the Iranga region as well as the Namat Naplus Park coincides at this gate. As is quite common in Namibia, the landscape changes completely just as you crest a hill or come around the corner. With international travel still pretty restricted, it was rare to see other traffic. This of course means the road conditions were much better than usual. The oryx we found next to the road is quite skinny and the rains can't come to its area quickly enough. Solitaire is the only fuel station in this area and was almost completely deserted except for this little guy. Yeah. The gravel road has claimed another victim. Sharp rocks in the road are deadly to tyres and at least two spares are recommended to avoid getting stranded. We carry three because of the caravan. As is usual, the jack is also packed away under all the other stuff 
as it is standard equipment. Okay. The sharp stones and heat also make walking around in bare feet a little uncomfy. Maybe yeah. The roads in this area passes by the beautiful Agama Lodge. They were kind enough to pay for the fuel for the trip in return for a small advertisement. In short order we were at the Sestream campsites enjoying the view. The next morning we popped out to Sauce's Flay, but that is a different video.